Sorry, just uh, several things to prepare. In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, comes glory forever. I mean, um, we know that the book of Jeremiah is a book that uh, the Lord is missing his relationship with his children. He misses us. So he talks a lot about the covenant and what what we are in or the new covenant there was something else called the old covenant and the old covenant the uh, broken by sin and also when God came to put the new covenant they crucified him God is get, getting to his own a new covenant and then instead of doing it we'll give him the cross so let's read this from Jeremiah and the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying thus says the Lord if you can break my covenant with the day and my covenant with the night so that there will be there will not be day and night in their season then my covenant may also be broken with David my servant so that he shall not have a son to reign on his throne and with the Levites the priests my ministers as the host of heaven cannot be numbered nor the sand of the sea measured so will I multiply the descendants of David my servant and the Levites who minister to me so God is saying that the children of David will not be right, just the ones that you count here. And I promise for David that he will have children. So as the day and the night, as the day and the night happen, we are not going to be surprised. There is going to be no day or there's going to be no night. Or that will be the second coming. Um, so as they are sure to happen, also the sure, a surety of the covenant of God. So why do we read David the prophet in the church? Because David the prophet is, uh, although he is in the Old Testament, but he is prophesying for us about the new covenant. And that's why us as Christians, we enjoy reading very much, and I hope to encourage you to read very much the Old Covenant. Because in it, Muhtafi, in it is hidden the new covenant. So, one of the bridges between the old, sorry, the bridges between Kubri, that's between the old and the new testament, is to choose Jewish disciples. If you choose Gentile disciples, if you want, for example, got them all from Egypt, they are Greek, very nice philosophers and they believe in Christ. What sermons they will give? Nothing, just philosophy. And then we believe in Christ for whatever reason. He did miracles as some are going to Egypt. And then there is no, there is, there is no context. And that's it. Imagine the Holy Week will be empty. He will not have any prophecies to read will not have a church built on prophesying about it. Justin Martyr says in 3,000 years, 4,000 years, 4,000, 3,000, 2,000, 1,800 prophecies, the timing of prophecies about Christ. And that is what he's saying, is that I will build covenant with David that his num the number of his children will not be numbered will not be numbered so the new testament is upon us before it was written because God chose the foundation of the church to be Jewish apostles. Some of them are mixed with Greek. St. Paul, in fact, he had a Greek name as well. 
Bolus and Shaul. Saul is the Hebrew and Paul is the Greek or the Roman. Saint Mark, Mulakab Yohanna, his also his name is John, Yohanna Mulakab Moros, and Mark. So he was very effective with Saint Paul in the service. Saint Timothy, his father was Greek, his mother was Hebrew. And that's how God is going to use you as a bridge. If if we don't understand the holy tradition of the church, we will not understand how the Bible was compiled together. And you will search in your mind, how can I understand the Bible? And you'll find that you read it only verse by verse, not in a, not in a context. So that's why what we're trying to do here, I hope it's not academic, but also uh, behavioral. I cannot tell God, um, I want just spiritual message. Then he will say, what of doing all of this for you to be able to defend me? Um, what, what is it for? So what advantage then has the Jew? Or what is the prophet of circumcision? Much in every way. Because without it, we will not have the New Testament, even if it's not written. God was not looking for the books to be written. There is a timing for them. But he was looking for, behold, I send you to disciple all nations and to teach them, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We call this the Great Commission, al Ersal al Azim. Tani Haga, or the second thing, the apostles, the definition of the apostles are they are sent. Al Mursaleen. That's what an apostle is. Mursal. We see this in two things in the New Testament. That God sent St. John the Baptist at his before his birth, when God met him in the womb of St. Mary, and St. John the Baptist is in the womb of Elizabeth, he sent him, he ordained him. Anybody remembers where the word sent came in the New Testament? It's not a quiz. I mean, there's no grading, but if anybody can scratch your mind and see where the word sent came in the Gospels. In a, in a, in a Gospel we read during Lent. Sent. Yes. What? Where is the sense? So Nether says exactly the man born blind. Where is the word sent there? The, maybe Besson wants to the pool. Yes, and I want to save you from answering another question. And since your friend was Besson, then Besson can jump in and save you from that. Besson, Besson is thanking you so much. <laughs> you, yeah, he covered. Thank you, Nether. You saved us all. God sent you tonight to uh, <laughs> to wash our faces and become open-eyed. Yes, and and uh, and and the the man the man born blind represents all of us when we're born from our parents. We're blind. When does get when does our eyes get opened? What do we call that Sunday in the Coptic Church? Had what? Had the tanasir, the Sunday of baptisms. The Sunday of baptism because there's a blind man is was sent he washed he came back seeing and it didn't stop there he defended Christ so all of us when we get baptized receive the Holy Spirit the communion we defend Christ okay so last time we stopped otherwise we'll stay the whole ten weeks and whatever it takes in this chapter. Um, sin. For the truth, for if the truth of God has increased through my lie to his glory, why am I also still judged as a sinner? As we said, there's a heresy that appeared in the church that says, let's preach God by sinning. And because he forgives, this will be attractive to the people that God is very forgiving, which is what happens. So don't judge me, don't judge me, don't judge me. God is forgiving. Well, this is complete fallacy, and it's, uh, you see here, it's in the, in the tradition of the church. 
You even can go further. Let us do evil that good may come. Yeah, if this is what God intended, then we can go all the way. Evil preaches God. So instead of us falling into it, let's do it. It's a new way of preaching. Let's do evil as Christians because this way, when God forgives, we're going to be preaching God. And St. Paul is said that he does this. Why? Because he is saying, let's stop circumcision. Let's stop this idea of clean and unclean food. So people perceive him. In Asaf Takaru, people perceive him. He's preaching evil in order to preach Christianity. So St. Paul says, no, no, no. No, 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 no. We are slanderously reported. We are people tell us that I'm doing this and as some affirm that we say so they keep repeating what I'm saying but they do it wrongly and now I'm accused that I'm preaching God by sin what is the sin breaking the law what law no circumcision no clean and unclean food so he says basically may God deal with them not only may God, deal, may God really condemn them. Their condemnation and with your words you will be justified and you will wear, with your words you'll be condemned. It's their words that will condemn them and, and really this should happen because they are damaging my preaching. So he gets into a very beautiful idea about sin or about the law. Before we forget, this chapter is dealing why it's advantageous to be a Jew. It's advantageous to be a Jew, and God used Jews to preach. In fact, he told them, don't go into any of the Gentiles, go to the lost sheep of Israel in Matthew chapter 10, when he chose the disciples, and their names are in St. Matthew chapter 10. So I need to come to my own people. They have the background, and of course, some of them believed. They were not courageous to defend them, like Nicodemus. He came to him at night, and... He asked for his body after he was crucified. And in some of the movies, he's de uh, depicted as trying to save Christ from, from death. A very old movie called Jesus of Nazareth. It's actually six hours long, but it's magnificent. The, the music of it, of that movie, uh, is, is just makes you contemplate. It's a, the classic about uh, called Jesus of Nazareth, Robert Powell. What then, are we better than they? Not at all. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they're all under sin. How, St. Paul, are we all under sin? It means we're all corrupted. That's why every person born from Adam and Eve after the, after the fall needs to be baptized. And those who are holy but did not get baptized, which are the Old Testament righteous saints, are in Hades, but the Lord will take them to paradise, and he did. There is none righteous in terms of innocence from, in front of God. Even if the saints made mistakes, Moses was upset at some point. He kept debating with God to go to Egypt or not. Um, Abraham lied twice, but they were righteous because the, the, the way of uh, believing in God and doing his work uh, in this generation was very difficult and they did there is none righteous no not one there is none who understands there is none who seeks after God they all have turned aside they have together become unprofitable there is none who does good no not one now these are the evil ones they um, the um, other unholy ones, Absalom, for example. Now, this is not the righteous people of the Old Testament. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues, they have practiced deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. That's prophecy about the Pharisees as well. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Cursing, yeah, it is good that one person die rather than the Omer, the Roman come and take our nation. That's cursing, cursing Christ. The miracles didn't matter. The, 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 the poor women that were very happy with what he was doing with raising the dead and saving them from being stoned, it didn't matter to them. 
Their feet are swift to shed blood. عايزين يموتوا على طول. Just for them to stay in position, they just rushing after the blood of Christ. Destruction and misery are in their ways. Yes, this is why the weak part of this, the Jewish nation, did not believe in Christ, thanks to the Pharisees, Hosara. Destruction and misery, they destroyed the people under them, are in their ways. So may God, you're, not, you're, you're exactly the opposite with your children. You're trying to elevate and build and, and, and bring to Christ are in your way. And God, of course, will help you. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. White washed tombs, they appear white from outside, and inside of them it's full of dead bones and extortion. Very nice tomb. What's inside? Uh, decay and, and dirt. So us, uh, God is asking us, I can accept sinners, but I cannot accept hypocrites. Because I came for the sinners to repent, to give them, um, to let them know the devil is strong, but I will put them under their feet. In case the devil attacks the, 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 your feet and bites it, because he doesn't have the, the, the power on your head anymore. He did in the Old Testament. That's why everybody goes to Hades. But in the New Testament, I'll put you, I put this enemy under your feet. So, overcome him. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. This is what part we stopped last time. So, we're kept under the law to, to label us we're sinners. Is the law sin? No. The, just, the law label says, these people needs maintenance, or these people needs to be rebuilt from the beginning. That's what the law did. Everybody is corrupted. Everybody is under sin. Everybody is not doing goodness. They need help. And the help is in the law, because Christ came from the law, from the law and obeyed the law. So, but the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified. So if you do the washings, if you do the circumcision, if you offer animals on your atonement, where am I going, God, to heaven? No, heaven is closed. There's nothing that can give you the key of heaven. So the law let me know that I am captured under sin till comes the one who will do the remission of sins. Remission of sins. So the law did not make me sinful because the Ten Commandments doesn't make a person sinful, makes a person very holy. But the law said that no matter washings you do, no matter animal sacrifices you do, the circumcision that you have a covenant with me, it makes you part of my people. But because corruption runs in your body, you have to be rebuilt. So if you die in this condition, yes, you will go for a period of time away from me. But because of your actions, that you obeyed the law, that you observed the law, that you held the commandment of God, you'll come with me to the paradise. So the law saved them. In namus anqazhum in al-gahim. In namus anqazhum in al-mawt al-abadi. But in namus amalum and when in nazdi mahtaga khalas. So by the law is the knowledge of sin. Mish, the law taught me sin. By the law is the labeling of sin. There is something called adultery. You cannot do it. There is something called stealing. You cannot do it. So if you steal, it's, lit, it's written there. You're labeled. You're a sinful person. You have to fix it. And that makes meet the person holy. Because we need, we need sometimes a lasai. We need the stick to tell us, hey, wait, 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 wait. This is out. If you do this, you're going to be stoned. So God allowed this to happen. So people don't take it easy. But in the New Testament, he said, I trust you, I trust you more. So if you commit sins, you don't get to be stoned. But if you don't repent, the punishment is bigger, which is an eternal stoning. So with the grace comes a bigger responsibility. So please let us not relax or slack. If, if, if the Old Testament is that clear, 
then the New Testament is something we say, because God loves me, I'm going to stop sinning because I want to offer something back for the blood he shed on the cross. Khalas a mature person. We don't have to treat you like a kid. We're going to put your salvation that you own it. But there's a responsibility with maturity. When you give your, your son or daughter a car, he has to learn how to drive, not because it's the law, but because you care for the son and the daughter. You cannot give them a car out of love and he does not know how to drive and he crashes. So we have a law that has punishment if you're caught without a license. That has a punishment, but that preserves my children that somebody said I cannot allow them to be on the road till they pass this test, until they pass that test. That's a protection. So not every law is a punishment, but rather it's a protection. Okay, so the summary of this part, we're all corrupted. Thank God there is a stick that tells us if you, if you work um, sin, there is a punishment. In the New Testament, there is a punishment. The punishment is eternal. It doesn't mean because we're lenient in the New Testament that there's no punishment. But there's no immediate one by stoning because the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is inside the person. The Old Testament, if I let people up to their own and God tried it, we end up with Noah, Noah's case. I need to recreate from the beginning. I'm going to start not from Adam and Eve, I'm going to start from Noah and the, his wife, eight souls. And that's why this is a symbol of baptism. So when we read this part, we don't say, and God put the law to say, this taught me sin. sin St. Paul will address it again um, later on. So we're doing this because a Jewish person knows Christianity very well, more than a Gentile. A Jewish person, which are the early writers, uh, the apostles themselves. Imagine there is a church that's founded by St. Paul. How authentic and how original this is. We're all Jewish. Because I cannot trust this, that I come in vacuum. I need people who understand this from Adam till uh, Malachi, or till the Maccabees, in order to show that I am in the Old Testament. This reminds me, by the way, St. Cyril. St. Cyril is an enigma. Um, he's the one who defended it against Nestorianism. Um, we find in the writings in Egypt specifically, up to the 5th century, 5th century, Farn al Khamis, Christ, of course, the 1st century, St. Cyril is still writing to the Jews. Is, uh, why? Why is St. Cyril still writing to the Jews in the 5th century? And the masterpiece of, co of co commentary on the Old Testament is St. Cyril. Christ in the scripture. Every book in the Old Testament has Christ in it. And God has allowed this to happen to e in Egypt. Why in Egypt? Think historically. Was there a Jewish population in Egypt? Yes or no? Yes. Very good. Why yes? Where did they come from? Guess. Caliphs is in the middle centuries. That's uh, Islam and on. That's a different beast, they, literally. <laughs> yeah, when? When did they happen to be in Egypt? I mean, the Exodus happened. What happened between Moses and then later on? Anybody knows? Year 70. Year 70, they didn't flee to Egypt. They were completely demolished in Jerusalem but it's before year 70. Something happened similar to year 70 in the Old Testament. Septuagint, exactly. What is the Septuagint? What is the Septuagint to explain it to, in late man term?
It says that usually the people say it's the second, but it's not sure. Okay, why are they in Alexandria? Why are the Jews in Alexandria? It's a trip from let's go have a trip to Alexandria. Why are the Jews? Why are they not in Jerusalem? The library is by the Greeks. Before the Maccabees, think of the captivity. When did the Jews suffer dispersion, a shatat, to be dispersed in the world? When? What caused them to be dispersed in the world? Not the Roman Empire. Much earlier in the Old Testament. What is this empire? Babylon. Who took the Jews captive? Babylon. And before them, the Assyrian. When the Jews divided into two kingdoms, after Solomon, Jorbaam in the north and Rahbaam in the south, this became the kingdom of Israel, has ten tribes. This became the temple of Judah, has two tribes, Judah and Benjamin. And the Assyrian took the north, and then when they wanted to take the south, God sent an angel. This was under Hezekiah. He sent to Isaiah, told him, basically, pray for me. And God, 2 Kings 18 and 19, God sent an angel that killed 185,000 of the Assyrian. So now we have the Assyrian defeated in the north. Israel is wiped off the map as the ten tribes and left Judah, which has the temple. And now the kingdom of Judah has just two tribes. This is the first captivity. Now the Jews are sent somewhere out of the promised land. Nebuchadnezzar comes later, defeats the Assyrian. Sankarib was the head of the king, the king of the Assyrian. He was killed by one of his children. And then Nebuchadnezzar came, comes and then he wipes Jerusalem, destroys the temple in 586 BC. This is why the Jews got dispersed in the world. Why is that affecting us and God will take this to be beneficial? Just to show you the plan of God on how to use the Jews and the translation of the Old Testament to Greek to spread Christianity. So fast forward in the history. The Babylonians were defeated by the Persians. Daniel was under both kingdoms and then the Persians had very nice events under it. Cyrus, the great king, offered them to go back and build the temple. They didn't, comes after this Haggai, and then you go back and build the temple, comes Esther, and they become more glamorous in the kingdom of, of, of the Persians, and then comes Nehemiah and builds the, the wall. All of this, the Jews are dispersed. They actually don't even want to go back and build the temple because Persia is treating them very well, and especially after Esther, they became so prestigious in, in the kingdom of, of Persia that actually they don't care to go back to this Kharaba dump called Jerusalem. They are so in luxury in Persia. So God was very hurt, and that's why he told Nehemiah, in his, uh, which is what we do in the junior high, I give them all of this history to see and how it affects us personally. Um, he tells them, you're caring about your paneled homes, and you don't care about my house, which is, I, I deal with for the junior high historically, and also building the temple is building yourself. And when you say there is ha I have other priorities than myself, that's exactly telling God, I will leave your house, my soul, in ruins, and care about my paneled homes. So the Haggai is a great, great, great repentance book. So forward. Now the Jews are everywhere. After the Persian, who defeats the Persian Empire? Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great takes the whole world. From Macedonia, where his father Philip started the empire, all the way taking over Persia, down to India, including Egypt. Hence, Alexandria. And he builds, because he, he, Alexander said, I need to bring the Greek philosophy to the whole world. So he builds a major library in Alexandria. Alexander dies. When Alexander dies, we get divided into three types of the Greek Empire. A useless one in Macedonia, who cares? A very hot one in Palestine under Seleucids. And then another very vibrant one under 
Ptolemy in Egypt. So Egypt now is a hub of Greeks and a hub of Jews. So Jews are filling Alexandria. And as you bring up your children in the United States, their mother language becomes what? English or Arabic? English. So Ptolemy was friendly to the Jews. And the head of his library, because this is the library of Alexandria, and they want to exalt how amazing it is, I, actually, I used to know the name of the head of the library, told Ptolemy, we need to get their book into our library. That's why he said to Jerusalem, sent me six from every tribe. That's six times 12, 72, Septuagint, Sabaniya, to translate the Bible. So now God's plan is actually going to be amazing because when St. Paul goes to the synagogues, St. Paul is fluent as Greek. He's born in a Roman zip code <laughs> for a bit. <laughs> So he can, he can speak in Greek and he can speak in Hebrew. He wants to bring his own brethren. So when he goes to the synagogue, he can speak in both languages. And they have a book to read in Greek. That Old Testament in Greek. Wow, I can build the Christianity on this. This is what God is thinking. I will build Christianity on this. The Old Testament that can be read in the current language. Are you following what's happening? When St. Cyril in Egypt is always has a huge population of Jews because of that. In Jerusalem, Antiochus Epiphanes is the one who followed Alexander the Great in ruling the Greeks in Jerusalem. He was not friendly with the Jews. In fact, he said that any woman who circumcises her son, we're going to slaughter her son and let her, let her hang her son around her neck. And he, converted, he built a gymnasium in Jerusalem temple is, is, is defiled in order to do sexual orgies in it, in order to defile the land more and more. So we need to clean the land. So God sends the Maccabees and the cleaning of the temple because Antiochus Epiphanes goes and fights the Persians, there's some wars happening, he gets killed. And after the cleaning the land, they celebrate the Hanukkah. So the Hanukkah is dedication of the temple after it has been defiled by the Greeks. In Egypt, it was much holier than this. They respected the Jews. So that resulted in the presence of strong Jewish presence in Egypt. That was good and bad because St. Mark was persecuted by these Jews. And all of the patriarchs, till St. Cyril, were persecuted by the Jews. St. Cyril was, very, was put in a very bad situation because of a Jewish plot. And in the West, they claim that he's the one behind it, or he's, he's at fault. Therefore, St. Cyril keeps writing, explaining the Old Testament in order to convert the Jews to Christianity. That is why we have St. Cyril commenting on the Old Testament very, very, very well. That's the historical plan of God since the fall of the temple and the Mukhanazar, God is planning ahead. If I'm going to preach Christianity to all the nations and I'm going to build it on the law and the prophets, I need all the nations to understand the law and the prophets. So the fullness of time was I need a kingdom where the language is unified under this kingdom. And that's the Roman Empire. So we may, we may think that God is just things happen without his control. He could be planning very, very far with these plans so on a limited level whenever you uh, read the old testament just say without this we would not have christianity but now the righteousness of god apart from the law is revealed apart from the law means do we ignore the old testament no apart from the law means you don't need the worship of the Old Testament to be righteous. There is another worship. When you take communion, you're righteous. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets, Christ said, search the scripture, they testify of me. So what St. Paul, was, what St. Cyril is doing, he's translating the scripture. Uh, he's explaining the scripture in Greek. By the way, the Greek of St. Cyril is so deep that today Greek scholars, very advanced Greek scholars like Father George Dragas, he says the writing of St. Cyril in Greek is not simple, and he's a Greek priest. 
with a PhD, and his PhD is actually in San Athanasius and San Cyril, their theology in two Coptic popes. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteous of God through faith in Jesus Christ. So now the righteous of God is not through sacrifices. Through faith in Jesus Christ. And this today gets taken out of the Bible and says, okay, faith, 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 faith. See, righteous is not by the law. It's by the faith because it's not understood. Righteous is not by the law means that if I do the worship that's in the Old Testament. But the righteousness has a new worship that is in the New Testament. Who's the first one that was given the statement that there's going to be a new worship? First one ever that God told them there's going to be a new worship. Ever. Christ told them this. There's going to be a new worship. Hmm? Samaritan woman. Exactly. Salvation from the Jews. But the hour is coming and it is now that people who worship God will worship Him in truth and spirit. The first one to get the news that it doesn't matter where anymore. Any place you put an altar, that's the true worship. It has to have an altar. It's not a meeting room. It has to have the throne of God. The altar is the throne of God. He will come and sit on that throne. And then we'll gather us all to partake of Him through the four Gospels. If you notice in, in, in Paradise, it says there is one river and divided into four. That four is not haphazard number. The one river is Christ, or the work of the Holy Spirit in us, who is sent by Christ, and then caused the writers to write for us four rivers with different names. And these rivers are the ones who are watering the paradise, and the paradise is the church. So, from the very creation, God is preparing a place where he's going to be in that place. He's not separate from earth. Earth didn't have a fall yet. And he's giving us that that earth had four rivers watering it. And the water has been consecrated by the Holy Spirit from day one. So it's not just normal water. So this is the image of the church that existed before the fall and will exist after the fall, after the New Testament. Beautiful. That we, that's why I said Genesis 1 and 2 is the key to the whole Bible. Because salvation is a restoration to the creation. To all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Even the righteous people, yes, they have some sinful acts. But I mean by here, all are labeled. We are needing to be repaired by the law. We are not because of actions, but because of our nature. We cannot approach heaven when we're corrupted. So we have to be born from above. That's what we call baptism. Another verse that gets used wrongly. Mubarrarun magganan. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. I heard this in many, many discussions I heard with Protestants. Yes, it's free. The cross is free for us. He's the paid the price. Baptism is free. But they don't believe in baptism. Chrismation is free. You don't believe in chrismation. Communion is free. No, free means like you're going to heaven because God saved you. Romans 10, 9. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord and that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Done. You don't need anything else. Wrong. This is the foundation of salvation, but it has to reach me. That it reaches me for free as well. It's called Ni'amit al The grace of baptism. You're going to get it for free. The grace of receiving the Holy Spirit for free. The grace of receiving communion for free. But we cannot be saved without them. So when this verse is taken, I believe Jesus Christ is the Lord. I believe he rose from the dead. I believe in the Trinity, which is actually a dogmatic uh, in, um, statement in the church. I'm saved. I don't need anything else. I don't need this. I know God on my own. I'm saved by Christ. Wrong. And that's why when we explain the sacraments, we say it's a free grace. But we cannot be renewed on our own. So here is the, that's why Romans is used very, very wrongly. 
whom God set forth as a propitiation kafara by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance God has passed over the sins that were previously committed as the east is far from the west so I will keep your sins away from you thank you God 26 to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus what is his righteousness while we are sinners Christ the innocent who didn't do anything wrong he died for us the righteous for the sinners what does that mean God loves you God saying there is nothing you can do that you can make me look at you as anything other than my son or my daughter nothing if you are as parents know how to give your children good gifts how much more the father in heaven as he's telling the Jews so enjoy this enjoy that 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 tell the devil you can never separate me from God where is boasting then because boasting as we described in Galatians means I'm a Jewish I'm an expert in the Jewish tradition I'm gonna take this Gentile under my wing and I'm gonna push down his throat the circumcision then I became a teacher so St. Paul says wrong wrong that's why this verse is very important to see why it was written in Galatians God forbid that I boast in anything and he's a Pharisee and knows all of these worships except in the, the, the cross of Christ and this for us what are you boasting about that you're Christian the best gift you're given in your existence that you were born Christian this is something you didn't choose can you live otherwise can you think to become in anything else other than Christian what a torture so where is boasting then it's excluded Khalas. boasting is away from us by what law of works works of the law so again Protestants hold on to this says you don't need works you're saved already no when you read Galatians by works of the law we are not saved by the works of the law so what sample says here don't boast because you're doing the works of the law it's out what's in the works of faith what he told the Samaritan woman those who worship will worship God in truth and spirit I wonder if one lived in the Old Testament how to become righteous I think seeing the result of any sin that it's murder kill I mean killing not murder killing stoning and we perceive that God is different but the difference is us now we can feel God more because we think like him we think of compassion and forgiveness and if you notice this is the this is the logical behavior of human we like to love we like to forgive we like to say let's give another chance because we want this to happen to us so the worship under the law God knows it's deficient but I can't trust them to give them um, that they can judge themselves we tried the Adam and Eve in the paradise where there is no sin whatsoever they fell can I trust them without Christ in front of them without communion without father of confession without liturgy I can't so because I love them I'm gonna use the stick I'm gonna use the stick but the stick is in the hand of a father not in the hand of a judge it's important who's holding the stick when I hold the stick as a human I can damage everybody around me I can be vengeful but when God holds the stick he may injure but he has the healing at the same time so it's not God's problem that the law of the Old Testament looks like this it's my problem and he's paying the price for it because it doesn't make him happy to treat me like a child that's why Christianity makes sense to the humanity like what other faith where God reveals himself and puts in your hand the repentance and always say whenever you come and say I'm sorry he will say I love you you're my son you're my daughter what 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 is what relationship could be between the creator and the creation like this nothing Christianity is the only 
logical human treatment for a God who respects me. God, and I'm, if you look at an ant, like an ant walking, walking on the floor, how much do we think of the ant? Like the will of the ant and her career plans and her jobs. <laughs> it's an ant, you just don't, done. Or if you're merciful, you let it go and just contemplate on where it's going. And, and that's it. But the difference between the human and the ant is nothing compared to the difference, the difference between God and the human. The gap is so much bigger between God and him. Who covered this gap down? It's him. So this, the, 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 the logic of a human existence has to be crescent, nothing else. Everything else is just unwaving. And from the devil, all of these religions is coming from the devil. Swindle the leader, or no, actually the leader does it on purpose to make money and fame and land and whatever, as you see in other religions. Or philosophy that takes it into meditation without was guessing about what's after death, because nobody knows what's going to happen. But we have it clearly. We know exactly what is after death, and it's not our moving. I am going to prepare a place for you. If it's not the case, I will not have told you this. And I'm going to come and take you. I will not leave you orphans. How, God? You ascended. No, no, no. I'm going to send another comforter. He will be with you, and then he will be in you. He will be with you for a while, and then on the day of the Pentecost, he will be in you. Or is, the God of the, or is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also God of the Gentiles? The Old Testament is full of prophecies about the Gentiles. Yes, of the Gentiles also, thank God, he sent some more to Egypt. Since there is one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith, do we then make void the law through faith? Certainly not. On the contrary, bin sabbat in namus. So if the Bible is not taken as one unit, you'll find the verses colliding with one another. And the verse is titled, faith only and not by works. We don't need the law. This whole chapter is between two brackets. First one, is the value for being a Jew? Yes. And the last one, do we remove the law? No, we establish the law. So the whole, it's sandwiched between this. The Old Testament is the proof that Christianity is the right faith because it has been talked about thousands of years. Christianity means Christ following. Do we then void the law through faith? St. Paul is saying, faith, faith, faith. Do you mean we don't need the law? No, 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 no. Certainly not, hasha. On the contrary, bil'aks. We establish the law. You see, if it's not explained this way, the Bible verses will collide with one another and it will become a, a research book because it has things opposite to one another. God forbid. God forbid that the Bible has things colliding with one another. But that happens when the Bible is taken out of what's called the holy tradition that the Bible came from. So, thank God. By God's grace, we finish Romans 3. Romans 3, in summary, St. Paul is telling us, you're labeled sinners, even if you're righteous. And it's good for you to tell God, I'm sick. So you're labeled sinners, and the book that labeled you sinners, it's the Old Testament. But in it comes the doctor as well, from within that book. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Is it good to be a Jew? Absolutely. Do we remove the law because we have faith now? Absolutely not. The law actually is better understood with the faith, and the faith is understood better with the law. We establish the law. So may God give us always to read in the law and the prophets. If it's not understood, don't worry. It's not that easy, but because it's not easy, then it's attractive, because it's going to be a hard moment when you think, when you see how this fits in Christ. It's not an elementary school book. God is respecting your thinking, so he has, the Holy Spirit has to write things that are hard, because he says, I want you to let your, work, let your mind work, let your mind work, let your mind work. I'm going to give you a faith that's full of turns and, and, and corners. When you, when, you, when you see them, then you're going to even enjoy the faith more. To Christ is the glory with his good Father and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Let's pray and then we'll do the raising of incense. I see the little angels are here. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 
for allowing us to be born in the apostolic church the church that's not founded by human thinking but rather upon the Lord by the Lord delivered by the apostles who are sent to us and to the whole world and kept in holiness by the church fathers and by the congregation everyone in his home everyone in his work carry the cross which will be converted to glory because you showed us that we can be entrusted with that faith give us the strength to enjoy our power over the devil because he's under our feet and let us know that whenever we're overcome by him he is a defeated enemy he's still under our feet as you promised Eve that the devil will attack your heel but sorry for the serpent that the, the serpent will attack the heel of the children of Eve but then the child of Eve the Lord Christ will crush the head of the devil through intercession of the mother God said Mary as your children hear us when we call upon you thankfully our father who art in heaven I suggest you read this chapter again at home. It's a good, uh, it's a big, big meal. So, okay. we'll start right away. We have no other help and tribulations verses, but you, Lord, as your children, hear us and we'll call upon you. Thank you. Forgive us our trespasses, forgive those trespass against us, lead us not into temptation. forgive me and pray for you. Let us give thanks to the of some merciful God, the Father of our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ, for He has covered us, helped us, God has accepted us to himself, spared us, support us, and have brought us to this hour. Let us also ask, Lord God, I want to cry out for to guard us in all peace, this holy day and all the days of our life. Lord, have mercy. O oh, Master, Lord God, I want to cry out for the Father, our Lord God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for everything, concerning everything and in everything. For you have covered us, helped us, God has accepted us, yourself, spared us, support us, and have brought us to this hour. to goodness, love, and mankind, grant us to complete this holiday in all the days of our life, all peace with your fear, all envy, all temptation, all the work of Satan, and the counsel of wicked men, rising up of enemies in and manifest, take them away from us and from all your people, from this holy church, from this holy place that is yours. But those things which are good and profitable to provide for us, for it is you have given us the authority to tread on serpents, scorpions, and upon the power of the enemy, and lead us not to temptation. Sheretik, <speaking in Hebrew> 